Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Terrell Terry's media availability. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand or send a message in the chat if you can't, and uh, I'll, I'll let you go. Um, so let's see who we got first. Uh, let's start with uh, Dwayne Rankin. Yes, did you unmute me? Are, we, oh, are you, are we unmuted? I get, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, just wanted just to make sure. No problem. Hey, hey, hey Terrell, just had a, a couple of things. First, uh, thanks for doing this. And uh, then secondly, uh, didn't, didn't know if, if the Suns, I'm hearing faint, to know if the Suns have reached out to you yet and if they, just asking if they have. And then two, what do you feel like you can bring to an NBA team right away? Um, so to, uh, to answer your first question, um, the Suns have reached out to me. Um, I've done an interview with them. Um, you know, that, that interview went really well. Um, so to answer your second question, you know, I think the biggest thing that I can bring um, to a team, you know, right away, um, you know, besides my skill set, you know, is shooting and playmaking. Um, you know, I think I can bring, you know, a level of selflessness and, um, you know, a lot of hard work to an NBA roster. Um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, um, to, to bring success to an NBA team, whether that's, um, you know, having a role on the, on the team or, you know, being the biggest, um, the best teammate on the bench, you know. And so um, I think that's the biggest thing I can bring, bring to an NBA roster to bring about success right away. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alex Kennedy, you're next. Thank you. Uh, this is such a unique year. Obviously, everything's happening over Zoom. Uh, and a few players have talked about, you know, hiring their agent over Zoom, you know, financial advisors, things like that. Uh, what's this year been like for you, you know, having such a unique pre-draft process where so much of it is virtual? Um, you know, it's definitely weird at first, um, especially, you know, trying to get advice from, you know, past players that have gone through this process. You know, it's, it's kind of weird for them to try to, um, you know, give me an exact, you know, kind of, um, you know, good set of advice because it's so different. Um, you know, with this process, you know, I've kind of just tried to make the most of it. You know, I've been able to work on my body the last four or five months. And so, um, you know, I'm just trying to make a positive situation out of, you know, such a, uh, such a negative situation that the world is in right now. Um, you know, as far as Zoom calls goes, you know, at least, you know, there's, there's a method of communication that, you know, I'm able to have with people. And so, um, you know, like I said, I've just been trying to, trying to make the best out of a, you know, kind of a, a tough situation that the world is in right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rylan Styles, you're next. Uh, Terrell, just wondering if you had any uh, contact with the Oklahoma City Thunder and what kind of range you're looking at to be drafted in? Um, so I have done an interview um, with the Oklahoma City Thunder as well. Um, you know, I think that one went, went well, um, in my opinion. Um, and as far as range goes, um, you know, I'm feeling great uh, with where I'm at right now. Um, you know, I don't know an exact range that, um, you know, I could be selected or will be selected. But, um, you know, as far as things go right now, I've been putting in a lot of work. I'm um, seeing a lot of results, you know, you know, I'm very feeling very good about where I'm at right now. Uh, Louis Polacelli, you're next. Hey, Terrell. Uh, have you met with the Sixers yet? And do you have any thoughts on the overall organization? Um, can you repeat the last part of the question, please? Do you have any thoughts on the organization, the Sixers? Oh. Um, yeah, so I have, I've done an interview with the 76ers as well. Um, you know, I've had great communication with them, you know, especially with, you know, as well as my agent. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's an organization that, you know, has a lot of pieces, um, a lot of talent. Um, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they all put it together, um, you know, to make that next jump, you know, in the Eastern Conference. And so, um, you know, I'm very aware of what their organization has, um, you know, kind of what their values are. And so, um, you know, I've had great communication with them thus far. Aaron Rose, if you're ready. Hey, um, as, as a Raptors reporter, I guess I'll start. Have you spoken to the Raptors? Uh, yes, I've, I've done an interview with the Raptors as well. Um, it seems like your a three-point shooting is a big part of your game. Is that something you've kind of always prided yourself on? How did you kind of grow up and, and become such a good shooter? Um, so, you know, I've kind of just always been immersed, you know, around the game of basketball. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really know how I became – um, you know, a good shooter, you know, gr growing up shooting was never really my thing. Um, I was always kind of like a, you know, pass first player, even in high school. Um, you know, I went to Stanford and kind of just, um, you know, found out that I could, you know, really shoot the ball. And um, my coaches kind of went with that and, you know, put me in great positions to, um, to showcase that. And so, um, you know, to answer your question, I would say it kind of just, you know, came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. Thank you. Uh, Francois Damien Philippe from Q Basket, you're next. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, in an interview with uh, my French colleagues from uh, Envergure, that CEO, uh, your assistant, assistant coach at Stanford, uh, Adam Cohen, praised your tremendous work ethic. Um, what parts of your game are you currently uh, working on and uh, uh, focusing on in that pre-draft process? Thank you. Yeah, so the biggest thing that I'm working on, um, you know, is obviously my body. Um, you know, if we're talking about, you know, on the court, um, you know, I think the collegiate level and, you know, the NBA level are, you know, you know two completely different games as far as, you know, pace and spacing. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, break down film, um, learn from other guys, and then, you know, go on the court and, and work on change, change of pace, you know, different ball screen techniques, um, you know, passing out of ball screens, you know, um, a lot of things that, you know, can are, are a lot different than the collegiate level as far as spacing and reads. And so um, those, those are the biggest things I'm working on, you know, at this moment. Yeah, thank you. Could you tell us uh, about the guys you're looking at? And breaking uh, breaking down film. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know I think Chris Paul is, is you know is a big one that I've been watching a lot of film on. Um, Trey Young, uh, Steph Curry, um, you know just to see you know what what type of reads they're making. You know I see um, some skill sets in my game that you know are kind of compatible with theirs. Um, and so you know I think studying their game is is, is big for me um, to see see what they do in those situations, see how they maneuver, um, and really study that. And so those are some of the players I've been watching. All right, thank you very much. Ian Bagley. You're ready. Hey, Terrell, thanks for doing this. Um, do you have you spoken with the Knicks and the Nets pre-draft yet? Uh, I have spoken with both. Were those just the Zoom call interviews? Uh, or were they before or after the lottery? Um, so both both of those interviews were before the lottery. Um, and so, yeah, they were just um, Zoom, Zoom interviews um, as of now. But my agent has been in um, contact with them. And just to piggyback off an earlier question, I mean, how tough has it been to plan out uh, your schedule in terms of workouts and training pre-draft with the date constantly in flux? Um, it hasn't been too tough. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that, you know, my trainers have been trying to, um, you know, work on is, you know, pacing myself. Um, um, you know, there's, I have extremely high work ethic, but, um, you know, I think you really need to pace yourself over a five, four or five month period, um, you know, to, to get those results, but also to be, um, ready to go and, you know, be 100% when, when things start to pick up. And so, um, you know, I think scheduling hasn't been too difficult. You know, things have been kind of pushed back. But, um, you know, my schedule is pretty consistent throughout the week. And so, uh, you know, for as long as they push it back, if, you know, um, God forbid if they push it back again, you know, my schedule is going to, you know, stay consistent until it's, you know, it's time to go. Thank you. Charles Hallman, if you're ready. Can you hear me, Tyrell? Yes, sir. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, with all the things that's been going on, the uncertainties of the, of life these days, um, what 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 was the single thing that really convinced you it was time for you to try to to leave college and go into the pros? And what little thing you think that you are bringing into with your game that will help you be a professional player? Um, you know, so the, the reason that I, you know, chose to really leave school and, you know, go to the NBA level was, um, you know, I, I believe in my, my abilities to, you know, be successful at the next level. Um, but really what it came down to um, for my mindset was, um, you know, I've seen how much I've improved, you know, every single year since my freshman year of high school. Um, you know, I've taken tremendous jumps every single year in my skill set. Um, and so, you know, that, that made me confident that, you know, going into next year, you know, I'm going to take another tremendous jump. I'm going to be ready. You know, I think the biggest thing that's going to, you know, allow me to be successful is not even my shooting or my passing or, um, or whatnot. I think it's my IQ. Um, you know, I think I have a, a great ability to read the game. Um, you know, going in and having that IQ, I think, um, will bring a lot of success and will allow me to, you know, read the game uh, the right way. Thanks very much, Terrell. Thank you. John Hyken, when you're ready. Uh, hey, um, so I guess piggybacking off of a question earlier, what's been the biggest challenge for you of having to do all of this pre-draft stuff and even this combine to create a pro day video or whatever, like all this stuff over, you know, interviewing with people over Zoom as opposed to being able to do it in person like you would a normal year? Um, I mean, yeah, it's been difficult. Um, you know, I think everything being drawn out so long, um, it's been the toughest part, um, you know, constantly having to wait, you know, months to know where you're going to get picked. Um, what's going to happen, you know, has been extremely difficult, you know, um, in a normal year, you know, players are usually done with this process and um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, probably two months or something like that. And so um, had for us, this draft class having to go through this, um, you know, for, you know, several months, almost half a year is pretty difficult as far as just 
um, playing the waiting game, just, you know, um, working your butt off every single day, but knowing that, you know, you know that, that draft night is so far away has been the most difficult part for me. Uh, Zach Rosen. Hey, Tyrell, you mentioned just the journey this has been. What are you trying to accomplish from now until draft night, now that you kind of know when it's finally going to be? Like, what are you trying to prove in the next uh, month plus? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing I'm trying to prove, um, you know, kind of goes with, you know, the video that was, was released um, a few days ago um, by my agency, just showing that I've been working on my body, you know, so hard the last um, few months, um, you know, trying to show teams, um, you know, in, in, the, in the world out there that, you know, I'm more athletic than I'm giving credit for. Um, you know, a lot of people were, were doubting that, um, you know, I'd even get a shot at, at an NBA roster, um, you know, a few months ago. Um, and so, you know, I kind of took that in the back of my head and just, uh, you know, work my butt off all summer. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing I'm trying to show, you know, from now until draft night is that, you know, I've made those improvements. Um, I've been working hard on my body. And so, um, you know, I guess we'll see, you know, when the combine happens and when draft night happens, you know, I think the world will see, you know, what I've been doing the last four or five months. Thank you. Noah Levick, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrell. Uh, yeah, you just mentioned working on your body. Uh, just wondering what specifically you have been doing kind of as far as day-to-day -day routine uh, to gain that much muscle over these last few months. Yeah, so um, a typical day for me is just, um, you know, waking up, um, you know, eating breakfast, and then um, I'll, I'll meditate and do affirmations, um, you know, to keep my, my mental health, um, you know, healthy. And um, then after that, I have a lift in the morning um, for an hour. And then right after that, um, I have on the core workouts um, for an hour to an hour and a half. Um, you know, that's what my, my day is like. Um, after that, you know, I pretty much have the freedom to, you know, take care of any business I need to or um, relax. Um, and then, you know, after that, you know, uh, after I'm done on the court, you know, uh, nutrition is a big part. And so um, I have a chef that cooks the right meals for me um, every single day um, to put the right stuff in my body to, you know, get that energy from my lift. Um, you know, get those nutrients and get the right stuff in my body. And so um, I think it's kind of a three-part thing with just um, mental health, nutrition, and, you know, taking care of business on the court and in the weight room. Our next question is for James Ham. How's it going this morning? Uh, you've drawn some, some uh, sort of comparisons to guys like Trey Young and Steph Curry and being right there at Stanford. Have you, have you met Steph uh, and – what would that fit kind of be if you were uh, to go to a team like Golden State Warriors? Um, so I have met Steph um, one time. Uh, he was working out at Stanford, um, you know, back, was, back when I was in school. And so um, it wasn't a long conversation, but, you know, I got to ch chat with him for a little bit. Um, you know, very nice person, very cool guy. Um, you know, I think for me going to a place like Golden State, I think it'd be a tremendous opportunity for me um, to learn under Steph. You know, I think um, being able to learn under someone like that, you know, one of the best shooters, um, to, you know, to ever play um, would, be, would be incredible for me. And, you know, I think learning from him for um, however many years he has left would be, would be incredible for me. Have you spoken to the Warriors? Um, I have. Thank you. Chase Frederick, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrell. Um, I guess first off, have you talked about the Timberwolves uh, yet in this process? And then number two, I think coming out of De La Salle, a lot of us didn't have you pegged for 2020 NBA draft. Did you see your and one and done is a possible path for you even heading into college? Um, so to answer your first question, um, yeah, I've been um, in a lot of communication with the Timberwolves, um, you know, especially with that being, um, you know, where I'm from. Um, you know, coming out of high school, you know, um, you know to be honest, I, I didn't really think that, um, you know, I was going to be one and done. You know, I knew I had the skill set to play in the NBA, um, you know, with my size and things like that, you know, with, um, you know, I wasn't quite sure, you know, what would happen. Um, you know, I kind of, my mindset was just to go into Stanford and earn that, um, starting point guard role and kind of go from there. And so um, high school uh, yet in this process. And then number two, I think coming out of De La Salle, a lot of us didn't have you pegged for 2020 NBA draft. Did you see yourself and one and done as a possible path for you even heading into college? Um, so to answer your first question, um, yeah, I've been um, in a lot of communication with the Timberwolves, um, you know, especially with that being, um, you know, where I'm from, um, you know, coming out of high school, you know, um, you know, to be honest, I, I didn't really think that, um, you know, I was going to be one and done, you know, I knew I had the skill set to play in the NBA, um, you know, with my size and things like that, you know, with, um, you know, I wasn't quite sure, you know, what would happen. Um, you know, I kind of, my mindset was just to go into Stanford and earn that um, starting point guard role and kind of go from there. And so, um, you know, I guess when I went into Stanford, I wasn't really um, worried about the NBA too much, more, you know, more short, short term about, 
you know, my goals and, you know, aspirations to, to complete at Stanford. Ty Carlin, when you're ready. Hey, what's going on, Terrell? So, All right, so earlier you said you had great conversations uh, with the Sixers. I just kind of wanted to know if you could give any details on that. Have they talked to you about possible fit, talked to you about playing next to Ben and Joel, things like that? Um, so, yeah, during my interview, you know, um, you know, I, you know, we're, there's a section where you're, you know, you're allowed to ask questions. And so, um, you know, that's one of the questions I asked them, you know, how do, how do they see me fitting into their system? Um, you know, they, they had some really positive responses, um, you know, they love my shooting, um, the uniqueness of my shooting, and you know, my ability to play lead guard as well as, um, you know, play off the ball. And so, um, you know, I've had great conversations with them. You know, my agent has as well as far as fit. Um, you know, I'm not really sure exactly um, how high their interest is or, um, you know, the extremity to that. But, you know, I've had some great conversations with them about fit um, and their interest in me. Now, the Sixers don't have a coach yet. I mean, is that something that, that concerns you at all or anything about the, a possible fit with them? Um, you know, it doesn't concern me too much. I think um, the organization will, um, you know, they're doing their best job to find the best coach. And I think, you know, when they draft their player um, or players, pardon me, um, I think um, that they'll take that into consideration. And so um, I trust them. Um, you know, I think a lot of people do with what, with what they're doing uh, moving forward. Thank you. Sam Perling, when you're ready. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. Tyrell, you mentioned in a previous answer that your basketball IQ is something that's one of your strengths. With the draft combine process being so unconventional, do you feel like that's something that you can still convey and discuss and amplify through Zoom without having the ability to do uh, you know, on-court workouts and things like that, that almost like the situation has played into that strength? Um, so, you know, I think it's something that, um, you know, I think a lot of people kind of know about me already. Um, you know, I don't think it's something that I need to um, showcase, you know, as much as other things that, you know, are red flags for teams or um, are concerning for, you know, other people. But, um, you know, I think for, in, in the, for the most part, you know, I'm a pretty cerebral person. Um, and I think I come across that way. Um, you know, I think having Stanford attached to my name, I think, um, you know, a lot of people are, are kind of aware that I have um, a strong IQ, you know, as well as the IQ test that I took um, a few months ago. And so um, I think that, you know, my IQ is something that um, te like teams are aware of, but um, I think there's other things, you know, that I need to make make clear that I've been working on, um, you know, over my IQ. Thank you. Last few questions come up for Tyrell. Alexander Berthoud, when you're ready. Yeah. Hi, Tyrell. Uh, we haven't seen many uh, six feet two players getting big playing time during the, this playoff. Um, what areas do you think you need to work uh, to overcome your size? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of things, um, you know, that I need to work on to overcome my size. You know, I think um, the biggest thing is just um, using my IQ um, in the right way and um, studying the game. You know, I think I have a skill set that, um, you know, will be successful at the, at the next level. Uh, I may not have the body um, for that yet, but I think with my IQ and my skill set, um, you know, I think I can find, you know, found my ways to maneuver around that, you know, like I did at the collegiate level. And so, um, you know, NBA is a different, a different beast as far as physicality. Um, you know, that's why I've been working on my body so hard. And, um, you know, when, when my IQ skill set and body kind of, you know, link together, I think um, that'll bring a lot of success at the next level. Rob Schaefer, when you're ready. Hey, Terrell, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm wondering uh, if you've had any contact with, with the Bulls throughout the pre-draft process. Um, and if so, uh, what your impressions of that organization or a possible fit there would look like? Um, so I did do an interview with the Bulls. Um, you know, I know their, their situation was, um, was a little bit, um, you know, weird. I think they had some front office hires, you know, this past, um, summer. And so it was, I was kind of doing that while, um, my interview while that was happening. And so, um, you know, I didn't have two, you know, intensive talks with them, but, you know, I did have an interview with them and, you know, I think it went really well. Well, and, um, I'm curious, you, you know, you've talked about your kind of path to being where you are now. What would a successful uh, first year in the league look like for you um, as you sit here now? You know, I think, um, you know, my success for, you know, from my perspective isn't even whether, um, you know, how many minutes I earn or, or how many points I score a game. You know, I think um, the biggest thing for me is just um, improving, you know, the, to the, the best of my ability and becoming the best possible rookie that I can. Um, you know, if I feel that, you know, I put myself in a great position to, to be the best rookie I possibly can, then um, to me, that's a successful rookie year. Thanks, man. Adam Teich, when you're ready. Hey, Terrell, appreciate your time. 
it's been recently reported that you've grown to around six foot three. And with that added height to your game, how much are you anticipating having to man the shooting guard spot going forward? Um, yeah, so I'm in shoes right now. I'm six three. Um, I'm a little bit over that, but um, you know, I think in college I guarded the you know the two guard, the off guard um, quite a bit, and so um, I think that's something that I'll, I'll be comfortable with moving forward. Um, you know, I love to guard the point guard, but you know, I think being able to be versatile and guard the two guard slot um, is going to be crucial for me to you know earn minutes at the next level. We got uh, two more for Tyrell, Dwayne Rankin again. Uh, yes, Tyrell, just wanted just to follow up um, in your talks with the Suns. How do you see yourself, uh, how, how could you see yourself fitting in with that group? Because obviously um, they, they've, got a, they've got a point guard already in Rubio. And, and, but like you said before, you can learn under a guy. And then two, uh, just what do you think about the draft class? Because, you know, there's, it's, it's considered a point guard class so how, how do you view this how, how do you view this 2020 class yeah so to answer your first question you know I think my fit with the Suns um you know I think you know with them having a, a point guard like Rubio um you know being able to learn under him would be um would be great you know I've been watching him since he was the Timberwolves since I was younger um you know I think with me my unique ability is that um I don't need to play the point guard spot you know I think if a team has a point guard you know I'm able to play off the ball um and things like that and so um you know to answer your second question um, if you could please repeat it, um, that would be great. I was just asking as far as the 2020 class, what, 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 do, you, what do you think about the class? Because it's, it's being viewed as a point guard heavy, heavy class. Yeah, so, you know, I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of talent in this class, you know, especially from the point guard position. Um, you know, the way I've been trying, you know, set myself apart is just um, being, you know, a different type of point guard. You know, I don't think there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, prototypes like me, you know, that can, you know, shoot in so many unique ways that, you know, can play you know, the one or the two. Um, and so, you know, I think that's been trying, the way I've been trying to, you know, set myself apart from the rest of the point guards in this class is just um, having that unique play style. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the, the thing I've been trying to showcase. And uh, last question for Alex Kennedy again. Thank you. Um, do you look at mock drafts or anything like that? I know some players do, some players don't. And some people have described this as a weaker class. And, you know, with how hard you've worked and your confidence in yourself, obviously, you know, how do you respond to people saying things like that? Um, so um, I, I don't look at mock drafts that often. Um, when the process first started, you know, I kind of was when I was in that, uh, you know, that period where I was, you know, kind of debating and going back to school or um, when I had my eligibility. But, you know, as of now, I don't really look at that. Um, you know, my agent will, will, you know, kind of make me aware of it at, at times, you know, certain ones, but, you know, it's something that I don't really like to pay attention to. Um, you know, as far as people saying, you know, this is a weak class, um, you know, I guess time will tell, you know, I think there's a lot of talent in this class. Um, and I think there's some superstar potential um, um, from, from, from several players. And so um, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll see when time comes, you know, uh, people have their opinions about every draft class before that actually happens. And so, um, you know, I think the biggest thing I can say is, you know, time will tell.